Hey, how's everybody today? So, as much as I love the way this is starting to look, and everything's looking good on it, it's all ready to go. We've gone over our setup, everything, put our wrap on. We're basically just waiting to hit the track with it in a couple weeks. And unfortunately, we've had some new restrictions, so that's been pushed back to about the end of June. Hopefully, that's the latest. Um, but we can't just sit around and watch summer go by, so we went back to what we know. I uh, picked up a Virel DD2 cart here just last week. And we're going to run this for at least until we can get into the late model. I uh, just want to get some more driving and uh, sharpen up the skills a little bit after our long eight-ish month winter. So, the cart looks pretty good. Uh, it is a 2015, so it's a little older for guys that know karting. But it's definitely going to work for what we need it to. I don't know that we'll actually be racing the carts this year, but definitely for lapping it'll work. Um, so what this is for people that don't know, uh, two-speed 125 two-stroke engine and it's paddle shifted on the wheel. You don't have to lift or anything, just hold it flat and hit the gears. So it's a lot of fun, very fast. Uh, we do like 120 kilometers an hour at my track, so that's pretty good as well. I think it pops out at around 140, but we don't have long enough tracks around here to really find that out. Uh, so we do have quite a bit to do on the cart. It looks pretty good, but still gotta go over it like anything that we race and make sure it's where we need it to be. Make sure everything's safe, nothing's going to fall off, or the brakes aren't going to blow out in the first turn. Because having that happen, and it's really not a good time. Uh, these carts sit incredibly low to the ground, so not quite an off-road machine. It's so like I was saying, there's some things that we got to do to this cart. Uh, you can see the previous owner, he left some gas in it for a year since it's been used, and that smells absolutely like... Uh, Burnt us all, so just gotta drain that out. We'll replumb the whole cart, change the fuel filter. Uh, I'm gonna redo the fuel pump, but I don't have parts for that, so that'll have to wait till next week. Uh, we'll be throwing a top end in it too uh, when I can get to my Rotax guy, but for right now, we'll just shake it down the way it is. Uh, we're gonna pull, pull the carb off, go through that, check our jetting. These are incredibly sensitive to jetting, like we'll change it between morning and afternoon, even. It's that sensitive. Uh, so we'll make sure that's where we need to be. Check the air filter. I'm thinking that's probably clean, but you never know. Uh, I'm going to change out some of these back bumper mounts. They just get worn out from tires running into them and that. They're supposed to roll ideally, but uh, they get worn out pretty quick when they start getting bashed on. As well, we're going to bleed, bleed the brakes. Uh, check this battery, make sure it's good. It's going to hold a charge for us. Uh, Got to add coolant to it. It's supposed to run straight water, but up here it's still freezing at night, so we're allowed to run coolant here for a bit longer. Uh, cylinders are prone to cracking with any kind of cold, so we don't take a chance on a $900 cylinder. So we just go down the list here. There's actually a decent amount to do, despite the fact the car looks pretty good. Drain our fuel, clean the carb, rejet it. Uh, we have to move the seat. This guy was like 5'4", I'm 6'2", so that's got to change. Uh, adjust the pedals. I'll mount my Micron and my dash for the GPS. Uh, we're going to switch to some old tires on it. Those tires are brand new, but I don't even like traveling with new tires on, so we've got some old sets here. We're lucky none of our stuff actually left in the fall for the old stuff, so... Tony Kart tires will work for that. Uh, we're going to scale the cart. Got my intercomp wireless scales, we'll use that. Don't really know how accurate it'll be, but it'll be good enough. It'll give us kind of a baseline. Uh, as well, we just kind of want a total more than anything. Uh, we'll nut and bolt the cart because I hate stuff falling off. Got to fix that rear bumper. Um, do the air filter, lube the steering, add the coolant, clean our power valve, and fuel lines and spark plug. So a little bit of stuff to do. Looking through my parts bin here. There's all my jets, we'll go through those. Uh, here's what an old bumper mount looks like versus a new one. You guys can see those get pretty worn out. And then they just flop around like that. Uh, we got new tires, not going to use those yet, but if we do go racing, those will come in handy. 
So like I was saying, we'll move the seat back probably as far as we can get it in the chassis. Uh, really, you want it just about so it's going to hit either the header or the frame. And this is already pretty close, so I might have to play with some angles and see where we can get it. Uh, as well, I'm a tall guy, I have to add a steering extension in here. I'll change this bolt out. With the DD2s having the steering and the shifting on one bolt, those can get brittle as well. You have to kind of run it loose, so good idea to change those out at the beginning of every season. Last thing you want is your steering snapping. Uh, other than that, so pleat our brakes. Pull this power valve off. These gum up with all that two-stroke oil and nastiness. So I have to go through that. So like I mentioned, we're going to try and scale the cart. Uh, see where the percentages were. This did win its class last time it was out, so I'd like to keep as much of the setup as possible. Uh, generally, we can go with setups between drivers, but and then we'll just fine-tune it from there. Uh, we don't do so much left side percentage like we would with the stock car. Um, as well, we have no options for really crossfader corner balancing uh, because no suspension. So all we can really do is move lead around. So we got to weigh 397. I only have to add about 10 pounds of weight. This cart has about 40 just on the seat. So we'll pull most of that stuff off. You can see all that lead up there. Otherwise, it'll be a freaking rock going around the track. So as I said, we're gonna mount our DPS computer onto the steering wheel of the go-kart. Uh, karting data is everything. These are incredibly uh, robust computer. Uh, we can go through on the computer, see our GPS overlay of the track, see exactly what lines are running as well as lap times, and we can add our coolant sensor as well. So we'll add that. You really don't know what you're doing without one of these. Very important. Uh, we have to go through the motor and check what gear set is in this. Uh, right here I have a 35 gear set. That's more like an option gear for our track. Uh, it gets you a lot more top speed, but you sacrifice some of the tight stuff. Uh, these are inside the motor. They don't wear out like chains, but they're a lot more expensive. You can see I paid 210 bucks for this one. Uh, generally, I want a 34 in there, especially to start off while it's windy and cold. Uh, we only run the 35 really on a day where we got other carts to draft with. Changing those gear sets is relatively easy, although I can make it look pretty hard. All you gotta do is pop these four out, pull our hub off, and our gears are in behind this cover. Uh, or you gotta either drain the oil or lean the cart up against the wall or something. Otherwise you're gonna make one hell of a mess with all that oil on the ground. Ask me how I know. So we are a little bit disappointed we're not gonna get to run the car right away. Uh, we can't even rent the track right now as is. They're kind of finalizing some stuff. And that could take a while, so really happy with how the wrap turned out. It's just kind of a simple half wrap deal. Uh, probably 60 bucks and then the numbers. I just wanted something that we can take off easy and fix if we need to. Uh, unfortunately, things kind of are the way they are right now. We nothing lot we can do about it. I uh, just got to make the best out of it. So one kind of nice thing when I went to look at this cart. Uh, does have a brand new set of tires on it. That always helps, especially with us just kind of wanting to lap this year. Uh, you get about 200 laps to a set of tires on these guys. Um, however, they're kind of like these race tires. You don't really want to leave them on and get all the oil and, you know, just crap from a trailer or a truck box on them. You can see these kind of got a little bit on them, but they're going to be more than good enough. Uh, but we'll get those off and get them stored. Um, one reason when we we're kind of pricing out the late model compared to uh, running these shifter carts. I think a lot of people underestimate the cost of these shifters, especially if you're trying to be competitive. Uh, new, they'll run about 13 grand. Motors themselves are five, chassis seven, and then you got probably a grand worth of setup and parts. So compared to, you know, $40,000 late model, that's not what this is, but, you know, new guys are paying a lot of money for the late models. Um, we kind of talked to some people and saw what they were spending doing the late model stuff. Tires here, they went up again this year and we changed manufacturers. So it's about 350, 400 bucks with tax, which is an awesome. When these are uh, 770, I think, is what we got quoted for tires for this season. 
Uh, we still got a few sets, so we haven't actually picked any up until they kind of give us the green light. But uh, and you realize kind of how much you're spending to do go karts. It's not so hard to move, but these are still very fun, and you know you get to go out and spend time with some good people. Uh, it's a lot. It's a pretty chill motorsport as far as that goes. Uh, if you're looking for a great way to spend a day. They are a lot of work, probably going to spend three hours in the shop for every hour you're on the cart, but that's no different than this, so just kind of know what you're getting yourself into, and they're a hell of a good time, though. So there we got the back bumper kind of looking a little better. I only had two of these new ones, so kind of to pick and choose. The rest just use washers to space them a little bit. But... Gotta make sure they're right, you don't want these falling off. BD2 guys especially are really bad for having their bumpers fall off. I uh, just want a little bit of a roll, make sure they're tight though. So like I said, they're a wear part. And you can see this just melted just from being pushed in and rolled. But, uh, the other thing, make sure bumper brackets are tight. A lot of guys try to do stupid stuff with the flex characteristics on these carts. Because we don't have suspension, they'll try to change the stiffness of the chassis by doing shit like leaving your bumpers loose. That's dumb. You want your bumpers on. Uh, as well, this bumper has been chopped. Normally there should be three rows, but that's actually a pretty common uh, mod that guys do for whatever flex they're looking for. Okay, so I got the airbox off. As well as the carburetor, we're just going to go clean that. Uh, so we got all this off, going to replumb the cart. You can see how easy it is just to change the main fuel line uh, with that airbox out of the way as well. It did look like they had a little leak here off the fuel pump. Uh, won't change these just because they are vacuum hoses, uh, not fuel line, so don't have that. Other than that, the reeds are looking okay. They are sealed uh, with the rest of your engines, so you got to take those to a Rotax guy to get those uh, changed out. But while well, we got access to kind of this side of the motor as well, going to run my Micron all the wiring from my dash up to the steering wheel. I already got the old fuel out and that was absolutely just terrible. That's uh, probably the stalest fuel I've got in here. But here we go. Yes, yeah, so we got the carburetor torn apart. Actually it looks really good in here. I'm thinking this was probably race gas, like non-ethanol, because there's not one lick of corrosion in there for even how bad that gas smelled. Um, yeah, nothing. As far as jets go, had a 125 in it. We're just going to put that back in. Uh, we do jet with the app. We just usually go too leaner than what it says, and that will give us kind of where we're going to start tomorrow. Uh, as well, just pulled out the jets, checked the float height. Uh, float height, here it was three and a half. So all good starting points. This looks really good. We're just going to blow it up and put it back together. Okay, so we got the fuel line all finished. I noticed they didn't have a fuel filter on this cart, so you really do want to have one. Any dirt grit gets into your reeds or your cylinder, it's going to be a nightmare. Uh, just space it off the chassis a little bit with some fuel line, and she's good to go. Uh, one point, make sure you put zip ties on all your connections for your fuel pump and that. This one's still loose, but especially up here on your tank, you get cranking on the wheel, you can rip things off, and you're going to have gas everywhere. Uh, so that's important. Just got my water temp sensor put in. Just make sure you Teflon tape that, make sure it doesn't leak. Uh, route your cables down around with your main harness for your engine. And then tie it up to close to the steering wheel. And we're ready to mount our dash. Okay, lots of, if you can call it, progress made. Got the Micron uh, wiring down here, just on the frame. Everything's loose, just because I gotta run it up to the steering wheel. And I gotta mount my longer steering adapter before we can really see where everything's gonna sit. So, over here, we got our longer steering adapter. We just gotta pull the old one off. But you can kind of see just how much extra that gives you, as well as you can adjust angles with this. So, any taller driver, just a very nice thing to have. Okay, yeah, so where we're at on this, this is back together with the original one. As it turns out, 
This one does not line up with the original Byrail wheel. Works on just about every other brand, but not Byrail. So, don't really want to go drilling holes in the steering wheel that aren't already there. So, we'll just run this. I do have a bit of adjustability. I can still go up right here a little bit. Uh, hopefully, that will keep the shifters off my legs as well. Extend the pedals, and that'll put my knees down a little bit. Uh, being that tall, you do kind of got to do some funky stuff to get these carts to work right. Uh, seat going back further is not really an option. Like you can see, we're already on the coil here. So that's kind of the way that's got to be. I like that because I don't like moving seats around. But unfortunately, that doesn't give us much room for uh, comfort and adjustability. So we'll see what we can do. It's already getting late here. So we'll drop the cart on the ground and see if we can get these pedals spaced out a little bit. Okay, we got the Micron finished installed here. And so we got our wires ran up the back for our tack, as well as water temp. Nothing's pinching, touching our steering, or our uh, shifter cables. Just got that tidied up. The water zip tie is cut, about a thousand. And she's good to go. Okay, so I went ahead and moved up the steering brace. Uh, still got probably a quarter of an inch clearance down from the top of the post, but you can see I moved it up about an inch. And it does kind of put it at a stupid angle. You know, your hands are kind of pretty far away from you. But we'll see. We'll give it a try. As well, I did move the foot brace a little bit. Still have to adjust the pedals, but I'll do that once the carburetor is back on. Um, and that's about it for tonight. Okay, so the cart's on the scales here. Actually worked pretty good. I was kind of worried it wouldn't fit in between the bodywork and that, but so I got it on there. And there's how it's looking. Front's dead even, and then left rear and right rear are very close. Uh, left percentage 48.3 and rear 627. Uh, so more with that lead, we're just trying to counteract the amount of weight that's on the right side of the chassis. The DB2 is a little better because you do have the battery and the radiator on the left hand side as well, but uh, it still does lead it to have more right side weight uh, when there's no ballast on. So I'll weigh it with me in the cart and see where it is. Okay, so we got the scaling all done. This is the cart after without me in it. Uh, I did end up putting about a gallon of fuel in it. That's kind of what we normally run for a uh, 12 lap main. Uh, so there's where we have it. 48.6 and 61.6. Front's still dead even. Uh, a little more on the right rear. So ended up taking a uh, 16 pound block off the back and replacing it with just a small one and took one out of the center of the seat. So all said and done took about 10 pounds, 12 pounds off the cart. Uh, this chassis is a lot lighter than the CRG I ran last season, being that we ran one three pound block and that was enough to make weight. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so just like that the cart's back together. Airbox is good. Uh, all that lead is secured. Still gotta go over and nut and bolt the cart, but the important stuff is done. Got my pedals all set up. Greased the bushings in here. My rail actually has a nice setup for that. Uh, however, it's kind of a weird setup with your adjustment for your pedal. It rubs on the frame and breaks through the powder coating. It's kind of strange. I would have expected something like Tony Carts, where it's a bracket on the frame. Uh, so it's a flat surface, but anyways. So that's set, everything's nice, plumbed, clean, ready to go. And we added coolant, so we're just gonna get ready to fire it up. So we can go ahead and fire this thing up.
and just checked it out. Uh, I did have it running before that clip there, so it had already come up to a little bit of temperature. As well, the DD2 is you don't want to run in neutral because your water pump only runs in gear. Kind of a weird setup, but uh, hence the clicking it into gear. But she runs good. And we'll see what she can do at the track tomorrow. Should be a good day. Did throw on our old tires. Looks a lot more ghetto now, but it's a start. You can definitely tell our right side tires from our left. The rights wear considerably faster, uh, but all of these do have the wear dots still intact, so. Should be good at least for a few sessions tomorrow uh, in practice.